Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us another day. Father, I ask you to look over each and every one of us that are sitting in this room today. Father, I ask you to look, o look over the police department and our children that are walking the streets of this town. In your name's sake, amen. 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 If there are any persons in attendance who would like to speak first um, regarding any concerns or issues, we're here from the boat club about this contract that we got a draft of, and um, we'd like to see some changes made on it. And also, we would like to see the Rowers Association lease and the gas dock lease. want to see on that lease or compare yeah we're just curious to see what you know it seems like we're the ones that do all the work down there and every time we go to sign a lease it's like a hassle and everything gets changed for us so we would like to see it down there. also the insurance the, uh, i thought this was a private meeting just for the boat club i didn't know it was a, no, a council meeting okay um the insurance that we have to have uh the club naming the borough as an additional insurance shall secure insurance coverage for personal injury death damage and destruction and replacement of the aggregate amount of less not less than one million dollars um we're, we don't want to name the borough on our insurance policy because they have always had their own and we always have our own so we're gonna we're gonna have, we want the insurance policy policy to be our insurance policy for a million dollars and the borough needs to get their own like they always have. We never had to name them on our insurance policies. We were supposed to. That was just out of the last degree. Hold that right from last degree. Like they named you on our insurance policy? Supposed to. Yeah. Supposed to. Well we I mean, we have our own policy. That's not the well, issue, we, don't, we don't need the name, right? If you have a million and we have a million, we should be good. Yeah, but the protection is for anything that you cause a problem with. Naming us as a sure sure then covers us as well under your claim. If it's something that you cause. If it's something that's our property, it is our fault, and they're going to come after us, and, and I'll be our responsibility. Well, it is your property because we run it for a minute. I understand, but there's things you do down there. We yeah. cover, we cover the dock. You have, you have a lawnmower. You get a gas grill. If somebody runs a lawnmower and kills himself or a grill, that's why we're named additional shores, so they can't come after us for that kind of stuff. That's why. That's it. Let's take that one question. step further. What if someone who isn't a part of our club goes down there? When we're not there. When we're not there, mm -hmm. operates a gas grill, the unforeseen happens, the lawnmower, someone gets a bright idea to trim the bush with the <laughs> lawnmower because that's all stated on the lawnmower and points out. But I mean, that's what we're worried about. That's well, the whole issue. So the reality is, anybody gets hurt down there, all of us are going to be drugging that lawsuit. It's just a matter of who's going to be the primary you know, person who's going to have to deal with that case. <coughs> what about off-season? Like, yeah, the state said we have to carry it public, make it public, but if we're not there, well, your, it's going to be Well, your relaxed. agreement is year-round, so whether you're there or not, you're, it's based on your lease or the agreement, whichever now. It's always been a year-round agreement lease, so even when you weren't there, technically, you were leasing. The insurance didn't change from the past 
at least 10 years. Why are you all, all of a sudden listening in here and we have to name you on our insurance policy when we never did for the past, what, 20 years? It was in the last agreement that that was in there. Well, I don't think it's not part of the same thing. Well, I know you probably didn't. You were supposed to, but that's just help cover us. You have your own to cover you. So we'd like to see that changed. Uh, the sanitation and litter removal. The club is responsible at its own expense. We always did pay the garbage and the borough came around and picked it up. Are you not including that anymore? How, how, how do you think we're going to get a garbage company to come down here and get all our garbage? And you want it to be public? Who, who picks up the public garbage there? We'll have a container down there somewhere. But we should take our garbage there and dump it in there? Well, that's that's, that's, that's yeah. the, that was a problem before. They used to have a big container and everybody would just dump all their stuff. It wasn't matter. And then we didn't have room. And then you have the rats and everything else. She's, she's meaning the public would drive down there and dump their yeah. stuff in the dumpster. Who, who Not just us. Who took the garbage last year? Yeah, right to the borough. The borough did. Yeah. Now that stopped? Well, the contract. Okay, yeah. so that... Yeah, we were going to stop that. That Why? has stopped. They still have to come down to all the other pavilions that are down there at the end. Well, if there's just a container, so our guys would just go down. Right now we have the contract company that comes down. So so when did that contract yours? stop with that well, company? No, we don't want them to be picking up <coughs> everybody's trash. It's supposed to be uh, just a container there. If somebody's walking and has a bottle they want to throw in there, we're well, not there to be picking up people. Well, that's the problem. Oh. The public comes down there and throws our, our garbage can sits up there by our porta potty. Yeah. They come down and throw their stuff in there. There's not a garbage bag in there. It's for us to put our garbage stuff in there. They come in and then we have more garbage than we really. We do a lot so, of cleanup down there as well. It's just definitely, I mean, I, I know that we do well uh, before and after where the, the club is picking up garbage and pop bottles and just all kinds of crazy things all up and along down there. So then, I mean, are we going to have to then truck that back? To wherever to dump it, or should well, we start thinking of you know, maybe going in on a dumpster? Here for the the council wants to consider collecting the garbage. That's fine. These well, are I issues you're bringing issue before them. I think it would be a hefty cause if we had to get around. Yeah. A hefty cause, and you know, we and we're doing all this, we're, we're keeping up every all the places down there. Your places, the Rochester places, aren't even looking. Up. I mean, they haven't been looking like for how many years now? And the, and they're cutting the trees. I don't know who's cutting the trees down there. They're just leaving the the big big pieces of chunk of wood, and then they're going to come down to our boat docks and cause damage. Last year, we actually had quite a bit of damage last year from big trees, and then we come in and cut them off and you know took them out of there. But we don't know who cut them down. Are there other concerns besides the trash collection? See, the problem that. Uh, the boat clubs have, they do all the work. They cut the hillside, they cut the grass, that's an expense. The trees, they keep everything trimmed, they pick up the garbage, and they keep the pavilions clean, they provide the pavilions with grills and gas bottles to run the grills. Um, and you want us to share it with the public, and we, we can't even get nothing for ourselves. No, it's an interrupt. The state is saying that you have to share it with the public. Okay. If if you're going to have an agreement with us, we're not imposing that on you. It's the state. But should and the landlord have the garbage and, and, and the for amendment. Us? Excuse me for a minute. The amendments that were made to the prior agreement, okay, were the amendments that the state said that we had to uh, implement, and John did that accordingly. Now, if I might just make a comment, you've had this agreement for a couple weeks, I believe. It would have been a good idea had you communicated to us some of your concerns so that we could effectively address them. And I'm going to suggest to council that we do that. Uh, you've made a couple of suggestions. We'll take them to heart. And let's see if we can revise it. 
But if we give you the revision, give us the opportunity ahead of time to address those issues so that we can come to some consent agree. Is that it? Agreeable well, I thought, well, I thought that tonight was the boat club meeting because you yeah, usually we, have your council meetings no, it's on not. Tuesday. Why did, we didn't no. know that. We thought it was May for I, us to discuss this. May I just correct you? Since God created Rochester, <coughs> the meetings have been on Monday night. Okay. Yeah, it's just really? January, okay. January, it's just January, Tuesdays. February. There's a holiday, January, February. Tuesday, it's always Tuesday, January, February, because the third Monday is always a holiday. That, that's why it gets confusing the first year. Actually. Now, why don't I do this before next, the end of this, at the end of May? All right. Make arrangements with me, and I'll sit down with you like you did the last time. Let's see if we can pound this out so that it's agreeable to, to all sides. Well, we need it before May because voting season starts May 1st. All right, well, today is only income tax day. I, I can make myself available 24-7 whenever you want. Okay? We can go at 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, in the all afternoon. Right. But let's, that's the only way we're going to get it done. Okay. And it's kind of unfair that we try to negotiate an agreement with a lot of people who evidently have some reason to be here. I understand that. You know, this council wants to work with you. But on the other hand, we have a third party called the state <coughs> uh, who absolutely <coughs> insists on this quote unquote public availability. And I know the gripes that you're making because you do take care of it. And yet it has to be open to the public and you have that responsibility. I can appreciate that and it makes sense. Okay, so if you can call me or we can arrange a date, you want to do it right now? Do it right now. Next Monday. Next Monday? What time? 26, 6 o'clock on the 22nd. It's fine with me. Is that okay with all the voters? How about 6.30? 6.30? 6.30. Okay, the 22nd of yep. April yep. at 6.30. Yeah, the issue would be Right fine. here? Yes, if you would be kind enough to email me the changes that you would like to make in that proposed agreement. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have um, several organizations as well as a bunch of interested parties um, coming back uh, from Brighton first. Uh, as you know, we were here um, in the March meeting and I talked about our idea of trying to have as a public service uh, project uh, a children's community garden uh, within the Rochester borough and our plan is to have a space <coughs> It doesn't require children in the borough area to be transported. So we want to look for something central that they could walk to. And we have um, a large number of people that um, are either seniors or adults who would like <coughs> to be able to do a program to help children and their parents have a gardening plot and make decisions about um, you know, what they would like to grow and learn how to farm and uh, even if it's a basic little container or a plot and we've had raised beds we have regular beds uh, and Brighton First is the 501c3 nonprofit that's been around since like 1998 we had reorganized um, our charter in 2014 and made it not a friends and family kind of board as we were <coughs> having more income and made it uh, a general community service board of people that are not connected or related to each other. So since 2014, we've been doing um, projects in the Beaver County area, even before that. And so we're the ones that sponsor the NAMI Beaver County building um, in Beaver, Pennsylvania. And our second project is what we, we call the Rochester Community Center, which is 132 and 134 Brighton Avenue. <coughs> and that's like four separate condos that we're 
and by condos I mean separate uh, 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 separate projects, I guess, that are in that um, each of those buildings, which is each about fifty five thousand square foot. So <coughs> we're rolling that out one of one of those projects yearly uh, through to two thousand twenty one. <laughs> So the Rochester Community Theater, our, our area theater, uh, which is going to be the home of our act and possibly some other uh, Rochester uh, uh, theatrical concerns, is going to be opening, we hope, uh, in May of 2019. And we're pretty close to going and having people look at it for an occupancy, um, an occupancy project. We also um, are the people who have the contract and are the fiduciary for the Senior Gardener Program that goes to the Beaver County Commissioners. Uh, previously, that had been Penn State. <coughs> and uh, Penn State Extension, I guess, had terminated that contract uh, at the end of 2018. And so the Senior Gardeners have been running up in Brighton Township for probably, I don't know, probably Mike, Mike Durham here is our committee member who's doing 35, that. But it's probably years. 35, 40 years, yeah. And so um, <clears throat> we have um, a contract through with money through Ro Office on Aging to take care of the tilling and, and a lot of the improvements that have been made up there um, through that time. And so the idea was to try to do something to get back to river communities. And so we have the, the Rivertown uh, Gardening Project, which we would like to have Rochester for Children's Garden be our pilot program for that group. <coughs> We come to you in March and talked a little bit about this program, what we want to do, and I know that you just had a discussion after we left um, during your regular, you know, uh, business, and had come up with this idea of the space, which was used to be a street. Um, I guess um, I can't remember the name of the street, but it's basically in front of um, the Elks. Is it? Oh, Kashoop Street. Yeah. So the problem with shoot is that probably the same reason that you've blocked it off as a street is that the angle is so steep that we wouldn't be able to have people with disabilities or in wheelchairs or walkers or anything like that be able to do it because it would be dangerous at that level of angle. Plus it's also heavily wooded on either side. Um, <clears throat> and so you would have primarily shade for a lot of the day, which would not be good for a garden as well. Plus, mm -hmm. you don't really have, you have the bricks, the, the paving stones that you've taken out, but we would need to actually have tiers to even level it off, and that would be extremely cost prohibitive. Plus, it's kind of a, a narrow, small space. So um, we were wondering if there would be a consideration maybe of trying to give us access, you know, and maybe a, a lease of like 15 years. We would develop the property, you know, get fencing and take care of benches and make it really nice. We have possibility we'd like to, if there's some space or some way that we could do a mural, doing a mural for the community and having it ac access for all, you know, children in the Rochester borough. Now, you know, any space you would give us would be dependent upon how big it is and we might have to cut off the number of children that, you know, participate because, you know, we only have a certain amount of space depending on what you give us. So I've, I've had several discussions with uh, Mr. Barrett, who's your um, borough manager, and I had talked to him about whether or not he was aware of any other possibilities of area that would meet these criteria um, within the Rochester borough area. And of course, a residential area would be better really than, frankly, anything commercial. And I know you had concerns about the, the places that we had picked out on the, on, on the map that were borough property because you think that might ultimately need to be developed or can be developed. <clears throat> but when I talked to him about this, he also brought up that you have a, a fairly flat, uh, sun-laden <laughs> lot uh, at the corner of um, Ohio and mm -hmm. Reno mm -hmm. Street. I mean, or, yeah, Ohio and mm -hmm. Reno Street, mm -hmm. which is right up, you know, I guess, over here. And uh, I guess that you guys have the um, ownership of that lot. And so we were wondering if the board maybe could work with us a little bit today and just kind of brainstorm about whether or not that would be possible. The problem is that, you know, when we had come in March, we had said that, you know, we thought that really March was like our decision point to be able to do something for this, this 2019 year. Um, if it goes back to 
longer times and we can't get started with our fundraising to be able to do that, mm -hmm. then we probably would, would not be able to do anything if we do find something in Rochester for 2019. So there is sort of a time press for this, which I apologize for. But, um, but we would like to do stuff like, you know, if we would get that lot, um, you know, one thing we would need is just to see if you, if, if you just could run a, a water line just from the tap just into the grass so that we would have a spigot for water. Um, the senior gardeners in the beginning up in Brighton Township had to carry their own water in, and I can tell you it was pretty grisly for a while until they got spigots in. Mm -hmm. um, but we would take care of building the raised beds. We would end up doing the murals. We'd like to try to do some type of community, get to know the gardens thing, where we would maybe have some like donuts or barbecue or, or you know, something to try to get the, uh, the general people in the general area and the kids interested in doing this. Um, and you know, anybody that would be volunteering through Brighton First has to have clearances and everything else that, and we never have any one member alone with any anybody that we work with, so there'd be two or three people at any one time. Uh, so we have the general kind of safety issues that nonprofits, you know, generally deal with. Um, it's not it's not limited to anybody, any one group in Rochester would be uh, operational for any any kid uh, in Rochester, assuming that um, we have space. Um, and uh, so that's a little bit about it. Now Mike Durham as, is our board member from Brighton First. He's in charge of our gardening committee. He's gonna make a few statements too. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Suzanne, I was appointed to the Brighton First board in uh, January and right now we're, I'm overseeing the, uh, <clears throat> the senior gardens up on Western Avenue. Uh, we have 40, 40 gardens, but anyway, um, we do appreciate the opportunity, you know, to once again present our proposal to establish a children's garden here in Rochester and hopefully in a residential area. The lot at the corner of Reno and Ohio is a prime example of what would meet our expectations. It's flat, it, it's absolutely perfect, and compare that to Kasut, you can't compare them. They're two different. Uh, Two, for two different examples. <coughs> the Brighton First will establish a children's garden that will appeal to the neighborhood if we're able to be granted use of this property. First and foremost, it will be a garden that will be managed by Brighton First and maintained by Brighton First. We will talk to those in the neighborhood about our children's garden and explain to them the benefits of the garden as it relates to them their neighborhood, but especially their children. Just imagine this. The garden is all ready to be open. It's there. You've given us a property. We've got everything in place. The parents or the other relatives are going to bring their children, regardless of age or disability, to the garden. With a few instructions on how the garden will initially be operated, you know, we have the children learn to plant and learn to water and they begin to care for their plants. That's how it begins, that, that's the beginning. There's no great big program that we have until we get it started. And it started with, with for lack of a better term, you know, planting the seed and getting it going. The children learn quite a bit, even at the ages of four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> uh, I can just picture the neighbors bringing their kids down to the garden for 15 or 20 minutes and showing them how to plant seeds and what have you. And I said at the last meeting, what did kids learn from this? Well, they learned that, that it's a commitment. They learn to observe and watch their plants grow. Um, they learn, they learn about teamwork, how to work with others or how to work with a team on a, on a, uh, on a uh, garden that they're all responsible for. You know, they learn about responsibility. They learn about life experiences, as simple as a garden. You know, they plant something, they see it grow, and it dies. And what do they do? You know, they learn that they have to start all over again. As simple as that is, you know, in a child's eyes, that can be a dramatic thing. It's something that they learn. But they also learn about the joy and the happiness of gardens. And that's a, that's a thrill when a kid watches a flower that they planted bloom. 
where they watch a, a vegetable plant grow and then they harvest and pick that tomato or that green bean, whatever. Plus they take <coughs> pride in what they do. So these are all the things that are affiliated with just a simple garden in a neighborhood. And that's all it is. It's nothing more than that. So this is how the children's gardens begin to grow and catch on. You know, other programs and activities could be created and added as we see the need. You know, one activity, you know, we could start by taking the kids to a farm or to a dairy or something as, a, as an activity. You can, you can do programs <coughs> for children uh, around poison prevention, pollination, what, we, uh, what type of vegetables and flowers to grow. But of course it's all delivered at a child's level. So a seed I think needs to be planted here tonight, you know, by each of you, by every one of you. We hope that you'll see the need, you know, for this children's garden and see the beauty of its intentions. That's the key, its intention. Just as the children would see the beauty in a flower. So. Thank you. Can we just have a show of hands of everyone that came in who wants to go over um, or is here about this community garden initiative? It's pretty much everybody. Mr. Bear, would there be any concerns with the street plot? Not that I can think of off the top, off the top of my head, but. Um, you know, we would have to be considerate to the neighborhood as you know it is a neighborhood <coughs> garden you want to put fencing around you know, I'm not sure we want to put something that nice that right. our neighborhood's not going to be affected yeah. and we would talk to the neighbors <coughs> I'm sure my, name is, my name is Frank Blaskowitz I also was here last month uh, from St. Cecilia's from St. Cecilia and, and we have a several of us here from there um, <coughs> last evening I had the opportunity to visit with Stuart and Amanda and Stuart and Amanda live on the corner right across Reno from this lot and when I explained to them who I was and with what <laughs> groups I was affiliated with and what we were interested in doing they were really really excited about it and they did think that their their other neighbors would be as excited about it too and I know when you go up that street <coughs> on other times, you see an awful lot of kids up there, you know. And, and you know, when I walk, when I drive up there and see all those kids, I think, you know, what a wonderful opportunity for them. So, anyway, that's all I had to say. Thank you for your time. May I just ask a legal question? Um, do I presume correctly or incorrectly? that Brighton First has some type of liability coverage as you conduct this program. Oh, obviously, yes. I mean, we have we have liability coverage. We have to, for our contracts, we have liability down at the community center. We have uh, liability issues in our other sites. We also have to carry liability for the county because we get an office on aging funds. And so we have a rider that describes uh, liability coverage for us at um, <coughs> up at the uh, Western, you know, the Western Avenue Senior Gardens. We also get an extra rider, which is not required by any of these places or organizations or funders, so that if our members are going in their own car and driving for Brighton First Business, so let's say Mike's at the Senior Gardens and he realizes that you know all the spades are broken, and he has to go and drive down to Walmart to get some more spades. If he's in an accident. At that point, what his insurance wouldn't cover would be covered by our insurance over that. So we have an extra rider for our volunteers. Now, we don't really have, um, we, we have, of course, liability and injury for the sites, but we don't really, you know, the, the extra rider that we have is for our volunteer members as well. Well, what about the children if, in fact, they were injured while gardening? Well, that would be why we would have the insurance rider that we so have. That just the only just like thing that have. I would request is that if council sees fit <coughs> to approve your request, that you produce some type of proof or certificate of insurance uh, to join. Absolutely, we would do Thank the exact same 
accountability we've had with the, the Beaver County Commission. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It'd just be a, mag uh, a matter of the term of a lease. It could be five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 50 years, whatever uh, I mean, you're interested in yeah. trying to accomplish. With I that. mean, I think that the other thing that we would toss out there would be that if you ended up wanting us to, um, as far as a lease, um, you know, uh, we would provide the insurance for the site, um, obviously, but if and I realize you may have to put this out to bid because it's, you know, for a property, but we would also consider possibly a land contract over a period of years where we would then take that off of your hands and be able to pay you some money um, to then acquire the, the site and then you wouldn't have to worry about it as far as your liability and everything too. So either of those ideas, and maybe we could even meet with Attorney Rabbit later on or we could get something going for 19 and then think about it you know even a possibility of something different if you would want it if you want this off of your hands you know um, <clears throat> then you know we could also consider that as well is this something we can consider and then um, maybe get the information the liability insurance and gather that information before we move forward or I think you could make a motion to approve it in concept until all the details have been put together in at least agreement that everybody is agreeable to. I think that short term, since you want to get started like yesterday, yeah, right. uh, <laughs> That's uh, a lease would probably be to your practical benefit and it would also be to everyone's benefit just to see how the program uh, works out. Sure, no, 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 that's fine, but I and just... It, if I, it turns out to be great, yeah. uh, then it may well be in your best interest to purchase the property uh, from Rochester. However, you run the risk that somebody outbids you right. for that piece of property. So it's, it's somewhat of a two-edged sword. A lease can protect you, uh, at least short term, but if you decide to buy it, uh, then it might be a competitive uh, project. No, 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 I, I understand that, but I just, the only reason I threw that in there was because I sensed that I may just have been wrong, but the liability sounded like that might be a concern, so if we buy it, then it's not so much of a concern for Rochester, so that's kind of the way I tossed that in there. That's okay, thank you. Sure. <laughs> then I'll put forward a motion to agree, approve the concept for the Children's Community Garden. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second to I second it. <laughs> 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 well, I need a second. Need back a second. No. Need a back a second. Need 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 a second from council. Oh, yeah. Well, second. Well, second. Does anyone need a second? Mm -hmm. I made a motion. Okay. Can someone please second it? Nobody's seconding? I guess you're not going to make it vote. Can we do a roll call? Or no, if no one seconds it. You can take a vote unless you want to second it. Can I come up second? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Fail for lack of a second. Okay. Wow. Uh -huh. May I ask why the ones that didn't second? Can you explain the reasoning? Just out of curiosity? Yeah. I, I, I'm just not sure that that's what would be the best thing to do with that piece of property. So is it the property or is it the garden? Like no, it's not the property. It's not the garden, it's just the property? Yes. Do you have another suggestion from, for a property? Not at this time. No. Okay. We had tried to sell that property in the past, and no, no one was interested in the last several years. I think it would be the perfect thing for Rochester Borough to have a garden there for children. Yeah. What's your Personal plan? What's your plan with that property now? Right? There is no plan. It's just there's no plan at all. Just for the children who play there. 
during the summer. How long has it been a vacant lot? I want to say 10, 15 years, Mr. Howe. Mm. It's been longer than that. Longer than that? Longer than that? Oh, it's good. been vacant longer than that. Wow. Uh, as, a, as a point of just tossing stuff out here, um, so if, because obviously if it dies without a second, I mean, I'm a president of this nonprofit, I've been on national boards, I understand what that means. You don't have votes because if people aren't going to second it, they're not going to vote for it. So essentially, we don't have anything near quorum to be able to pass this motion. Um, what would be, if you would post it for sale, what would be your timeline to post it? Well, the procedure that you would follow would be this. First of all, council would have to entertain a motion and approve that motion that that particular property be put up for sale and accept bids. That's the way you would start that. And what would be the timeline for that, roughly? Just, 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 it just would, getting crazy and throwing I, stuff out there. Out of a, out of a real spirit of transparency. That would be totally dependent upon the discretion of council. Okay. Now, so, for example, <coughs> you know, I'm I'm advising you and I'm advising them at the same time. But if, in fact, council were to say that uh, uh, they approve that this property should be set up for sale, and they would be requesting bids. Mm -hmm. Okay, those bids would be. Do in a certain period of time. Yeah, that's I was wondering okay. is that the, the and then, time to get bids. And then, and I, I really want to be fair to you that every bid that is received runs the risk of not being accepted. I understand that. Okay, I, I, I got so that. that uh, maybe I should represent you <laughs> and go this way. But I just want you to understand uh, what you would have to do to. Uh, Accomplish your purpose if, in fact, you were entertaining. Stuff. No, I mean, I, I understand that. And, and I mean, I, I think that, you know, the council may have some trepidation because, I mean, you don't really know, you know, who we are or what we do. And, um, you know, I think that we've been really, really good for over 20 years flying into the radar um, in this county and in the country and overseas with everything that we've done and so I realize that you know on some level maybe in a year or two when the community center is open and you know us better then you might have a different view on letting us rent uh, a small lot that nobody has had any interest in for 20 years um, and, and I realize that 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 may be different for you at that point but the reality is that you know, we really want to try to give Rochester first crack at this because mm -hmm. we're we're Rochester citizens now, we're at 132 and 134 Brighton Avenue. And, you know, a, a lot of times I think, sometimes short-sightedly, and I'm not being critical of you guys, but for whatever reason, you may end up having us then become more diverse and suddenly start doing projects in New Brighton and and Midland and some of the other places that have been on our watch list as well, and a little bit of a little bit of encouragement would 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 keep us completely within your locale and with your citizens. And so, you know, I mean, I understand that you guys <coughs> have a right to have trepidation and make your decisions about your property, but I think that some people in our organization, knowing what we do, find this to be puzzling and. In a in an odd way, and you've got a lot of constituents here. I I, I don't know if that's really well, kind of what is there a lease yeah. agreement? I'd like to just say one thing. Uh, excuse me, but uh, every every week right now, every Friday, two hundred and ten of your kids, your students in the Rochester Area School District, get a food item put in their backpack every Friday during mm -hmm. the school year because of our group that works with Suzanne and Mike. That's our Voice of Justice group out of St. Cecilia Parish. We <laughs> kick butt 
and we have things going on now. My wife's working on something at home right now for a fundraiser to continue to be able to do that in the fall. We've already paid through May for the items. In September, October, November, and December, we're looking at programs now where we can raise money to continue to put that food item in their backpacks mm -hmm. for 210 kids. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be great mm -hmm. if they could learn how to grow some of these food items themselves, mm -hmm. like Mike said. And, and, and right now, your, your backpack program only goes K through five. Um, in the second phase of the rollout that we're gonna start in May, is a community kitchen to have free meals, free dinner every night for people in the community who are hungry. And we have a rollout to expand the backpack program if Rochester Schools is interesting, interested to cover the older kids. But again, I mean, and, and, and you saying no to the community garden isn't going to change any of that. But the reality is that because we have a philosophy of not telling people the works that we do, okay, you don't know us. Um, and I, I mean, I, I would urge you maybe after we all leave, because there's a whole bunch of us and we don't want to put you under any pressure, and, and we all leave, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. just think, you know, if there's something that you could agree to that would meet mm -hmm. these criteria. You have an idea of what we need now. You have an idea of, of what we need, you know, within the locale of the borough. Um, and, and think about if there's something that, that you guys want to do. On the other hand, we don't want to foist ourselves on you if, if this isn't right, if this isn't a good fit. And, 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 and you know, we understand that, but it, it's just, it's, it's puzzling, I guess, a little bit. I want to say, say one thing. Suzanne said something about, well, maybe we haven't proven ourselves to you or you haven't seen a result. I'm no longer a master gardener. But for the past 10 years, I managed the senior gardens. And now it's under Brighton's firm. <coughs> and I'm managing the senior gardens again under Brighton's firm. Go up on Western Avenue in Brighton Township. Go up towards the magistrate's office and you'll pass it. 10 years ago, there were just gardens there. If you go past it now, we have a 21 by 27 shelter. Everybody's got water. All the gardens are fenced in. We've already proven ourselves. I'm here to say that we will do the same thing for the garden here. So we are a proven, you know, just go up and take a look. I've got 40 seniors up there gardening this year, plus Beaver County Rehab Center. So. It's, it's not something that we have to prove. It's already up there and existing. So we want you to reconsider. You can see the passion that we have here. You can see what these organizations are doing for Rochester. You've had a piece of property for 20 years in the residence that you can't sell. And yet, you're hanging on to it. We'd like to do something in that neighborhood. And if we approach those neighbors in the next week or so, I know that every one of them would be enthusiastic about this garden, just as passionate as we are, and we hope you are passionate about it. Well, Excuse I, me, I'm just going to say that, you know, um, Keith Jackson, he said a prayer at the beginning, touched my heart, but it didn't touch everybody's heart here, meaning let's protect our children. Right. Well, you know, officer, you're an officer here. You protect our kids what better way is to have adults mentored up with kids getting them off the street rather than having someone to plug them with you know some drugs to sell and to and to capture that to capture those kids that otherwise wouldn't be captured and a simple thing so what I'm asking is to have mercy and to rethink this and to revote that's what I'm asking. Yeah. And in, in your heart, if you think like, hey, you know, I'm here for the kids and you're bobbing your head up and down, but you know what, words say a lot, but you know what, action is what drives it. And I'm just, I, I'm just very emotional right now because I think so much about this garden that it is more than what a garden is. It's really taking 
as a community, taking the kids under your wings here. So um, we're reaching out to you. We want you to reach out to us, please. My Thank motion you. is still on the table for the community garden. I think it would be perfect, other than seeing people walk their dogs through that lot and not clean up after their, their dogs. It's wonderful for the kids to play, but I can see the kids gardening with their mentors and doing something good and not getting into trouble, right. giving these kids something to do and letting them see where their food is coming from. Thank you. Growing their tomatoes, their peppers, their green beans, Thank you. flowers. Mm -hmm. Has there been any interest in purchasing that property in the last 20 years? Has anyone been interested in it? Or? Not that I'm aware of. I've been here 20 years. <laughs> the last six years. We had yeah. it with a real estate market, didn't we? In the years past? No? With um, we had everything out five plus years ago. We had a lot of properties out and <coughs> nothing. There were either very low bids or nothing much done. So they all properties sit. Any chance that uh, some people like the, you mentioned, you talked to a couple. Stuart Yeah. Yes. Do a, a survey of some of the people in the neighborhood, see what they would feel like. How they feel about it. That's a, I'm sure. That's pretty prominent playground for, for the kids in, in quite a few neighborhoods around the area. But if, the, if the neighbors in that surrounding area have no objection to it, maybe there would be a change in, of attitude from the floor. <coughs> what you were saying, at least from your perspective, your view would be that, that at least. What yeah. would be anybody else's view? Okay. Yes, would that be sufficient to change other council members' views? Uh, a survey? A neighborhood survey? Oh, um, no, I was going to say something. Go ahead. As soon as you get done. You um, finish. Well, I just wanted to mention that the property now doesn't bring any income to the borough, correct? So mm -hmm. wouldn't it be better financially and for Rochester to at least bring in a lease? Uh, well, well, I mean, it, 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 uh, at least on some level, yes, but we're also a nonprofit, so we don't pay taxes or anything like that. I mean, that's, we're, we're, we're a completely charitable organization. And that's the other thing, you know, there isn't a single person on our Brighton First Committee's boards that gets any money. I mean, we're a completely all volunteer, completely non paid organization. Um, and, and we have, you know, we've, we've built schools, a school in Dominican Republic, we've, Build a medical clinic. Uh, we've restored churches in, you know, a, even not necessarily even of the Roman Catholic denomination, you know, because we obviously have ties to St. Peter and Paul and St. Cecilia. But you know, different different religions in different parts of the world. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we we do operate on a fairly shoestring budget, but we do that because everybody volunteers every single minute of their time. And we have no executive director right now. I'm the president of the board of directors, and here I am talking to you. So, um, you know, I mean, I urge you to think about it, but I mean, and I'm not saying this to, to be inflammatory at all, but in reality, we really want to do this River Town project because we think it has tremendous community value for any community that is looking to deal with at risk kids and to bring a sense of community to an area. And, and try to, to do those kinds of things. And, and what may happen is that Rochester misses, misses the, the boat, and we end up having a very nice community garden in New Brighton, or Manac, or Midland, or somewhere else. I mean, not that we want to do that. That's why we came back a second time. But I mean, I, I mean our home right now is in, is in Rochester, and we, we like to keep our programming in Rochester. Mm -hmm. Would you be over the do the survey of the neighbors <coughs> and then get that to um, Mr. Barrett for us to review. I, I guess we so could. I mean, I, I mean, with the survey, I mean, how many blocks are you looking at? If it <coughs> would sway anyone on the board in a different direction, because right now we only have one person motioning, so I don't Is know. Is there a second vote? I mean, yeah, I we mean, can do that now. I mean, have, well, why not? Like now, why can't we vote like we usually do? 
do you want to vote later in the meeting? Yeah. That's okay. Me. I mean, I, I mean, if you want, I mean, you, even if you take it contingent upon looking at our our survey, okay. or and we can do a survey. Would you like it for like a block or so, a block yeah. around that area, all the residential yeah. locations and things? Let me say one thing about surveys. You know, <coughs> strangers go knocking on doors, and people just get you turned away. Hi, I'm from Brighton First. We're planning a garden right away. They're saying, no, I'm not interested in the <laughs> And that way it goes away. And, you know, sometimes things shouldn't have to depend on people who aren't even here who know absolutely nothing about it. Like Kathy said, you know, these programs are for the children. And I don't know if you have any programs for children right now where you take in, take them in, and are consider concerned about their safety and their future and everything else. That's why we're here. And I, you know that that's <coughs> why I'm I'm <coughs> hesitant about doing the survey. I, I do want to say that when we looked at the other two lots that were off of Pleasant Street, okay, we had done a parking study because we always do parking studies. So we did a parking study, and it was more than adequate. I mean, uh, Hind Street itself was and Pleasant Street's pretty much completely open until you get the lower end of, of, right. uh, <coughs> of uh, Pleasant Street. Um, and I, I did, I had somebody come out that does our parking studies and looked at that area, that residential area, and you have more than enough street parking up there. Parking is not the issue. Um, but I mean, if you want to have buy-in from the community, we could, we could go around and ask everybody and see how many signatures we come up with. My worry is when they hear Brighton first, they're going to think we're looking for money, we're trying to sell candy right. bars. I mean, you know, the, the obvious assumption is going to be that, that this is something they don't know about and they don't know if they want to write way in about. And one possibility might be to get this couple that's across the street, Stewart, Stewart and see if Stewart would run around. Stewart might have more cachet than us, and, and we could try that. But again, it, it might be that by the time that happens, we're probably looking at maybe mm -hmm. Not this summer, but next summer. I'd like to say something. You know, it seems like every time a group of people come into this town that wants to help out, everyone seems to say no, no, no. There's a group of people that's willing to come in. It's not going to cost you a dime to do anything. And you're saying no, no, no. Now that area sat down there 15, 20, 30, maybe 40 years or so. No one thought about doing anything with that piece of property until they decide they want to put something in there. Mm -hmm. Why is it that every time something comes into Rochester, you got to shoot them down, mm -hmm. or you're, or Rochester selling Rochester out to other towns for nothing? Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Why is it? You claim to, to be interested in this town? Let's, let's do something for this town. They're willing to do it on their expense, and you're telling them no. I don't understand it. These young kids need something to be doing. How many kids would be in a program? Well, I mean, looking at that lot, I think it depends on whether or not, what we're hoping is that we're gonna, it's going to be a family affair. And so we might get three kids in one family, they would have a spot. We might be able to have a significant number of kids, yeah. 20, 30, 40 kids sure. on that lot alone. Yeah. And the idea is that we're going to have some type of like shelter on one side that abuts one of the houses for some shade and benches. So for instance, it could become a community congregation center. People could come down and look at the people growing their gardens, sit down and visit. You know, I, it's not big enough that we could do some of the things that we suggest with the other side because the other lots, we had room that we could put in like a small little basketball court, have a small, remember I said a little neighborhood congregation center with tables and things like that, you know, that we could do that. That could be, that place could be the start of, you know, the other place for walks, let's say, if you want to do fundraising walks. We still could use with that smaller lot, we could do that, that if an organization like the American Heart Association wants to do a heart healthy walk all in that residential area up there, we could be the starting thing for that. They could call us and say, hey, can you open your garden? And we have donuts and coffee, and people could sign up there and get their numbers and then take the walk. I mean, money we, yeah, we, 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 would, we would help. 
you know, because the one thing is I told you last time in March, you know, which I know you, I, we don't work in silos. Everybody else in Beaver County, well not everybody, but a lot of people in Beaver County work in silos. We try to find other organizations. We go, we start with all the churches. Do you have kids in that area of Rochester Borough who would like to be in a community garden? Do you want to come help us? Do you right. want to do mm -hmm. things? And so we would partner, as Brighton First already has in Rochester, with these organizations. And we haven't even opened our doors yet. Well, can we continue to discuss this later? I sure. appreciate all the No, your no, no problem. And, and Mr. You know, Mr. Barrett. If I, may, if I may say yeah. one thing, if, if count with council's permission, um, I understand that if they go soliciting a survey, it could be problematic. Um, council's permission, I would have no problem going to the neighborhood. I think I'd be more receptive to the police officer going to the yeah, door. Absolutely. I will do the survey for the group. Oh, God, that would be wonderful. God bless you, Mr. Yes. But I need permission from council, the mayor. <laughs> to, to do that without their permission, then you know, you can't do it. But if they if they want a survey and that's what they want, I would be glad to do that for you. That would be wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Or I want to say thank you, Keith Jackson, for speaking up on our behalf. I appreciate you and I thank you. Regardless, you know what people think about me. I don't care. Thank you. But That's I'm for great. The people of Rochester. Right. I've been here 66 years, and I'm not changing for nobody. Well, accept I accept me the way I am, or don't accept me at all. That's the way I look at it. Well, I appreciate it because you know what? This is actually this could be a catalyst to show other parts of different communities, in Brighton, wherever, uh, whatever. But you know what? It, what it, it takes a community to raise a kid, exactly. especially when you have someone that's down and out. So who's going to do that? You know, if you turn your backs, don't ever say anything that you're going to do something for a kid and turn your back and not do it. Because this is we're adults here, and you're, you, know, you all have probably kids or grandkids or whatever. And, or if you don't, you probably know a kid that you have um, befriended and, and helped. So you know what, we have to reach down and pick up the kid that doesn't have anybody, so he doesn't, you know, is not gonna be arrested for drugs or whatever and be mentored by someone, a druggie or whatever. So it starts here, it starts with each and every one of you. And it starts with myself as well. And, and, and again, I, I want to thank you all for your time and your mm -hmm. diligence of listening to this. And uh, we wish you a wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. Holy Week. Thank you. Yeah. And I thank, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to add anything? Yes, I did. My name is Barbara. Oh, I'm sorry. I, oh, right. I didn't even know that you were okay. saying. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. It has nothing to do with your project. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. But I'm for that. <laughs> <laughs> I live down on George Street in Rochester. And as everybody knows, very small, tight street. Parking on both sides of the road. Um, very narrow. And cars, it's a busy street up and down okay and parking on one side I park normal on the other side I'll take and I will put two wheels on the curb because all my vehicles at one point in time have been hit from cars flying up and down or whatever you get a ticket if I get a ticket then everybody should get a ticket. Who parks the same way? Did you receive a ticket? Yes, I did. Okay. I see cars in that street parked on the sidewalk all the time. Trucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I came buses, there with the sidewalk. You got buses there. coming up. When I went to work this morning, there was three cars. And when I got off of work this afternoon, I went and I paid my ticket. I pay I have no problem paying my ticket. But if I pay, then everybody who's parked like we park, they should get tickets. Yes. Well, I'm saying, when we got the ticket, you had four other cars yeah. parked on the sidewalk. Why they didn't get a ticket? Why they didn't get one? Call the it was the next time. I did call the police. I did call the oh, police. Oh, yeah, they got one. I did. And yeah, officer, we called them. Lizzie, he did come down. He said, What do you want me to do? You want me to give them tickets? I said, Yes, I do. Well, we were told that, uh, well, who called the police? We can't tell you unless you pay us. 
$15. So we tried to pay the $15 a day, and they still wouldn't give us the police report. I was told that <laughs> they still wouldn't to give it to us. That. She had to look into that, but I did not get it because I would have paid, paid the $15. I paid that's the $25. They have to know who, they have to know who called the police. We, we had to run around there. Well, thank you for the <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that's not on our street, it's on the other street. Yeah. Well, like, we had like five tickets. Every time I turn around, it's, we get a ticket. Why? But the one behind us don't get no ticket. Well, thank you for bringing us we'll into the matter. <laughs> we know what. We know why. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we know why. Okay. Well, thank you for coming and bringing it to us. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank everyone. you. Thank you. Well, they ain't right. to go ahead and uh, proceed um, approve a minute minutes of the regular meeting for the stormwater meetings held on March 18th. I'll make a motion. Second. 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 I say motion. I can approve. Anything? Any questions? Any questions? No? Okay. Um, items for councils, consideration and action. Motion to pay all approved bills. A motion? Any questions? Anyone make the motion to pay all approved bills? I'll move. Uh, Mr. Howell, anyone? I'll second it. Mrs. White. Final draft operation and maintenance agreements for the boat clubs for council's review and consideration. We will. We just table that. Since okay. We're going to have another meeting. With okay. Table meeting on April 22nd. Uh, C, a letter from the Joint Sewer Authority solicitor requesting an easement and right of way to construct three separate sewer lines down Railroad Street and through two parcels owned by Rochester Borough. An agreement and drawings are attached for Council's consideration. Did anyone have any questions? I have reviewed those documents and from a legal point of view I have no objections. However, it would be my recommendation that Council pass a motion approving your consent to enter into that agreement subject to the review of the engineer. That easement, uh, that create any uh, loss to the borough in any, re any respect? No. No. You understand that the uh, the joint authority is under uh, a very burdensome uh, consent order, and in order to implement that consent order, uh, they have to have some way to implement it, and this is their best combination of implementing it. You know, theoretically, you could say, "Well, look someplace else." Um, I mean, I'm just speaking not legally, but uh, I think you owe the courtesy 
to the joint authority to grant their wish, subject though to the approval of the engineer. I'll make the motion. Yeah, a second, Mr. Becker, seconds. Thank you. Um, D, request for Lindsay Kiefer to purchase 411 Jackson Street from the Beaver County Repository for Council's consideration. Is there any questions or concern regarding that um, purchase the Council has? I just question the fact that people are buying up properties or nothing. And we sit here and say, yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. Take the well, Howdy, I, I hate to be Darth Vader. I know. I know. <laughs> there is a process in place involving the county and the taxing districts uh, when properties are generated out of the repository. And the county and they screen these very intensely, I think, these days. Um, and we have a commissioner here. Uh, but the county has approved it through their chief assessor. Okay. And the process says, and I quote, that none of the taxing districts are to unreasonably withhold their approval. Uh, and I have a note here, since the county has approved the uh, the deal, so to speak, all right, I presume that's a reasonable offer from the county, okay? But I would not, if you're going to put a motion out to approve this, okay, obviously you should approve it subject to the school district giving their approbation because it takes to the taxing bodies plus the county. If you look at your documentation, uh, the chief county assessor, uh, Kevin has approved this on March 29th of 2019. So again, if you're, if you're going to approve it, obviously uh, it cannot get totally approved until the county has approved it, which it, which it has done. We do not know whether school district has, and then obviously uh, uh, the municipality is here. I don't know, I'm just trying to explain the system. And the school district's um, board has yeah. I have something to say about that. Yeah. I was there, must have been this month, the sidewalk on that property, it's a shared sidewalk between 411 and the house to the right. Um, the basement wall is collapsing on that and the sidewalk is caving in which is permitting or having damage to the property on the other side I don't know if there's anything that we can say and if they do get that property if that is something that they can address like let me give you an analogy it might limp a little bit okay this mother is very upset that her ex is not paying support, all right? She can't oppose the visitation order, all right? This transaction will probably give you an ability, because this person is interested in the property, to improve it. If the transfer occurs, and by saying it will, then obviously you can cite them accordingly. But I would think if somebody's interested in the property and they know what's going on there, they would intend to do something about it. If not, they're buying themselves a quote unquote semi lawsuit from Rochester. Okay. Does that help you? Sure. You have a question? Yeah, are they going to purchase another rental property, make it into a rental property? Or that's been some discussion with this body before when people are buying stuff off the repository asking that they be present so you can ask them these types of questions of what's their intent for this property you now you've turned several down in the past because they didn't represent themselves before you and you had that opportunity to find out what their intention was for the use of that I know I had a note they said they were going to be here tonight obviously they aren't so 
problem. I think that's a, you know, you can basically say that you're going to suspend or postpone any approval subject to them appearing here to answer your questions. I have no difficulty with that. And that's a fair response to this. And basically, by you approving it, you're, you're saying that we'll, we'll um, go ahead and absolve you from any of the past taxes and any other expenses. Well, I think in fairness, you have a right to ask them what they're going to do with it if you're going to be willing to forego all that. So, I don't so think it's unreasonable. If we suspend the request, do we reach out to them to see if they come to the next meeting, or is that up to them? I think uh, Sean ought to send a letter okay. to them stating that we okay. expected you to be here. You weren't here, so therefore we have delayed uh, approving your request. That was just to sell the property. That isn't about the taxes or anything like that, right? To weigh the taxes, everything. Well, that when you give your consent, that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're, you're waiving all the. You're waiving the, the prior taxes. Right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but from a certain point on, they have to pay. Them. If you read your yeah, documentation, it's not. You're not waiving future taxes. I know that. I just I want to talk to them, see what it's going to be. I don't want another rep or any property. So we'll send a letter for them, for Lindsay Keeper to come to council if she wants to proceed with the proposal. Uh, e, a letter from the Martin Luther King Celebration Committee requesting the use of the park next to the Dollar General store for their annual celebration event on August 3rd, 2019, for council's consideration. Does anyone have any questions regarding that motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Howell. Second motion, Mr. Rothers. I'll make sure she's aware that we're going to be opening bids for that park project at the Thank end you. of April. That could very well be under construction this year at that time. So okay. I'll make her aware of that. You know, we're not going to be doing the Fountain Park. We could always move across the street to the Fountain Park. Yeah, that's a good option. At the letter from the Beaver County Boom soliciting sponsors for the annual fireworks event on June 22nd, 2019 for council's consideration. I believe we did this last year. We gave $500 last year. Is there any questions or do you want to proceed? I'll make the motion for the 500 time. Second. This is right, Mr. Howell. Um, G, the manager is presenting a proposed bench and trash receptacle to be considered as a standard for the borough to provide a consistent design element throughout the community. The cost of the bench is $1,020. The cost of the trash receptacle is $1,330. The manager is also asking to purchase two benches and a trash receptacle for Gerard Park and four additional trash receptacles for Brighton Avenue. Does anyone have any questions that they want to discuss? And then the bench and receptacle is a little pricey, but they're good quality. The last, you, know, you want something that will stand up to the weather, stand up to some minor use. And the very sturdy. And this would, I know, right now the new um, We've had business owners complaints have come. about yeah. not having receptacles down there. My thought is, you know, if we try and buy a you ever, it's not something that we go out and want to buy 15 benches and 15 receptacles. You buy a few each year and just start building up a, an inventory out there over time. I'll make the motion since I was one who always complained. About <laughs> <laughs> the garbage. I'll right second. Okay, Mrs. White makes a motion. Mr. Becker seconds. Do you need us to discuss any of the colors, or is that something that... That, that was out there as well. Okay. I mean, I typically would go with black. But that's why I put that color chart in there, if anybody had any real... Black would be the... Black works everywhere. <laughs> okay. down, down the street, yeah. Okay. Okay. Go with the black. Okay, H. New Brighton Borough is selling their Bobcat skid steer. The manager would like to discuss the possibility of Rochester purchasing this, purchasing this piece of equipment. They would probably accept thirteen or fourteen thousand. I mean, a skid steer. We don't have one currently. It's a very versatile piece of equipment. Uh, they're selling theirs, and it has a bucket. It does have the um, uh, the. No, no, no. It doesn't have any other attachments, but it has the uh, hydraulics that you can get those attachments. You can, you can rent those very easily if we have to need a 
concrete breaker or broom or any of those other types of attachments. Plus it gives us a backup right now. We have the backhoe down there, but you know, it's not always uh, available and it's not always out of service or in service. And so in the winter time we're loading trucks with salt. And this would be a little easier to manage uh, with the skid steer as well. Like I said, it would make a lot of jobs a little easier to do. It is used, it's in good shape though. Brighton uses theirs a lot, so that's why they went to just get a new one. We wouldn't be using it as far as anywhere near as much as they are, so a used one like this would, should last us. How old is it? How many bells does it have on it? Uh, Four hours. Yeah, it was hours. How many man hours? I can't remember the hours, I'm sorry. But it's, it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, it's going to be versatile, too, in the oh, yeah, working in the, uh, on the alleys, fixing up the alleys and trying to grade them and pave them. But this will work in the alleys where that big backhoe... Right behind the vet, I mean, uh, Elks. Right. That road there. Oh, that's terrible. That's a bad road there. But that's... That, that's that's a excellent piece of equipment. How much does a new one cost? Probably 20, 25. No, they're more. Yeah, about 40, probably around 40 or 50. Yeah, 45,000. Beaver uses it. They have one, right? Yeah, they have a broom they, attachment. They have a broom clear attachment. Their sidewalks they sweep in the winter. Yeah. Both sidewalks on both sides of the main street, plus other places. New Brighton does the same thing with theirs. Does anyone want? Okay. It could aid in snow removal. I mean, if you had a lot of snow and they were pushing snow, they could go around and. I think you can actually buy a blade for that too. Probably, yeah. The yeah. thing is, it's not real heavy, so right. sometimes it just slips right. and slides, and slide, yeah. but it can help in some areas sometimes. Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Becker, motion that anyone second? I'll second. Mr. House seconds. Five items for council's review and discussion. Council received for their review the minutes of the March 14, 2019 Rochester Area Joint Sewer Authority meetings. Anything anyone wants to discuss for sharing those? Okay. B, council received for their review the meeting notes of March 11, 2019 Rochester Borough Development Corporation meeting. Anything to discuss on those? Notes? C, the council, mayor, solicitor, police chief, code officer, and manager received from the Rochester VFW Post 128 an invitation to attend the 90th anniversary event scheduled for April 27th at 6 p.m. The Post would like to pay for the board members' dinners as their guest. You are free to bring a guest and their cost would be $12. Please RSVP by April 23rd as directed on the invitation. So read the invitation, feel free to respond if you plan to attend. Um, D, council received for their review the March 2019 Fire Department report. Any questions or anything anyone wants to discuss? Okay. E, council received a thank you from the Rochester Band on Basketball Program for supporting their program. Six committee reports, public administration, Mr. Becker. Yeah, your packet has the uh Expense and revenue from the first of the year to April 10th. In it for your review of questions. Any questions? That's all I have. Thank you. Public safety, Mr. Knapel. Anything to report out on? Sorry. Anybody have anything to report out for public safety? Public works, Mr. Howe. Excuse me, uh, back on public safety. Yes. A gentleman, well, that lady who was here about their parking ticket. That street is bad. People park on that sidewalk all the time. And if one person's going to get a ticket, they all should. Can we you do. look into that? Okay. We that do. Wasn't sure. Okay. Thank you. Does it need to be like parking on one side? You're not allowed to park. On the sidewalk. It needs to be that uh, way, but they'd nobody, probably squawk even louder if you did that. Nobody's allowed to park on sidewalks. Yeah. yeah the okay. road's too narrow. They really should only be parking on one side. Uh, side. Like 
on it. Yeah. We went through this a couple years yeah. ago, and yeah. there was complaints from council that cars are parking on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So we went down and we started ticketing them at the request. Um, it's yeah. been going on for forever because it's a very tight road. Um, but we did start ticketing, and you know, it's unfortunate that you know that they, they got a ticket, but if they parked mm -hmm. on the sidewalk, they, you know. Yeah. We, we do take it down there quite often. We do. Is that something that we would agree to make one or one size? Or yeah. is there not enough parking? It's a it's a rerun. Okay. Was it one side back before? The same thing years ago. Okay. And they decided to make it Clay Street one way east, George Street one way west, or I don't remember which yeah. one. But one was one way, one way. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking one way. I was thinking parking on one side. It, it didn't last too long. Everybody's cleaning and hollering and everything yeah. about uh, not being able to park any place near their house and one thing and another. So it went back to the same thing. Okay. Part, part of the problem, I live on that street. Part of okay. People have parking in the back, in the alleys, right. and some have garages. And either their garages are filled with clutter or their parking spot is filled with clutter. Mm -hmm. And they want to park in front of their house for some reason so it gets hit because, believe me, cars get hit there quite frequently. Yeah. So, I mean, it, okay. and everybody doesn't have that ability, but there are some that would, would alleviate some of the problems if they would do that, but mm -hmm. nobody wants to do that. Uh, Mr. Howley, do you have anything for public works? No, I don't refer to Okay. Um, recreation, the park project rebid opening will be on April 30th. Hopefully we'll get some reasonable bids this time and we can move forward with that project. We did take the fountain park out of the bid, so it's just a two the district park and the War Memorial Park. Thank you. So I'll let you know next time where we're at. Mayor's report? I have, I have oh, one thing under recreation. Uh, yeah, I was up at the ball fields on Connecticut, and uh, Mr. Eddie was up there, Lines, who takes him and his volunteers take yeah. care of it. Yeah. They're doing an excellent job, and, and we were talking, and he asked if council if we could get them some mulch for the playground up there, which we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. He said if they just dump it in piles in the playground, he'll he'll spread it whatever whatever it is that we get the mulch yeah because they just repainted they yeah, sent they me their pictures paint of cotton. all the it, it really the looks nice they, they do a good job yeah 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 we can. i have another question for creation if we get up our big new lights we remember we looked at lights last year for playground for the ball field yeah, yeah. 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 they're up yeah they're up okay mm -hmm. yeah Any other thing else for recreation? Mayor's report? Yes, uh, a lot of these alleys, they do need repair. There's more than just one or two of them. There's a lot of major dips, almost six to eight inches deep in them. Yeah. Your alley, I see people throwing grass and stuff in it, trying to build the holes up and, and brick and blocks and stuff. Okay, also uh, street sweeping. The end of Oregon Avenue. The last house on Oregon Avenue is in the township, and there was two cars uh, the other day. They got tickets from the borough for street sweeping, and they were in the township area. He took care of those. Okay. Thank new you. officer. He didn't know. Thank you. Yeah, I looked at it. I know it was a new officer. Correct. That's it. Okay. Solicitor's report. Mayor's report. Yeah. I'm yeah, I would like to extend my kudos to the board for its quintessential exercise of transparency this evening. <laughs> Most municipalities place limits on how long individual citizens can talk. And it was edifying to me that you had, and we don't have such a restriction here in Rochester, but it was edifying to me that you did listen and you disagreed and you may have agreed, but the point is that you should be commended for giving those citizens that opportunity. 
because a lot of municipalities have two, three, four, five minutes, and, and that's it. Uh, and finally, uh, I would like to wish all of you a happy, a blessed, and certainly um, an enjoyable on an Easter day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Food officers report. Council received for the review. Any questions or anything you want to add? I don't have anything to add to my report unless you guys have any questions. Our house on Reno Street, the burned out one, is it going to be demolished soon? Yeah, I want to talk to her. I didn't get to talk to her this okay. week or yeah. last week in regards to if she wants to. John, she, we have that money, right? So we can see. Yeah, as long as you get her consent. But what if it, the bid for the demolition is more than what we have for that? It shouldn't be, but if it's How about more if than I get a bid first and then talk to her? Yeah. Okay. You get the bid, let me know how much it is, and I'll let you know if we have enough. And then Now, do I have to get three bids on that? Um, yeah. You want Peggy, give me a call more about it. Okay. Police Chief's report. Yes, in front of all the council members, uh, you have uh, a copy of the um, monthly police report for the month of March 2019. You also have a copy of the code enforcement report from March 19th, 2019 to April 15th, 2019. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I can answer them. Managers and Treasurer's Report. Um, everybody has March Treasurer's Report. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer those if I can. Any questions? Um, the only one thing I wanted to add was um, on June 15th, the uh, Rochester Borough Development Corporation is trying to organize in emergency service personnel appreciation day. Uh, we're having that little car show, bike show, at the old Kmart parking lot that that um, uh, Rods and I can't remember the name of that group they're doing yeah. that benefits the veterans. So that's going to be in the parking lot. The uh, Beaver County Tourism has um, paid for Froggy to do a live broadcast from Brighton Avenue that same day. So the development corporation thought they would try and do this um, emergency service personnel appreciation day. We're going to try and get from the counties of Beaver County, try and get county fire departments, police departments, ambulance services to send a vehicle or two and some representatives and have them down Brighton Avenue and uh, and get people to come down and thank you for their service. It gives the departments an opportunity to show some, some of their equipment, talk to people about what they do. And, uh, so that's what we're trying to get accomplished for June. That was June 15th. Okay. It'll probably be from 12 noon till 2 p.m. That's how long Froggy's going to be down on Brighton Avenue. Okay. What's the time, Joe? 12 noon to 2 p.m. <clears throat> I think the car show is 12 to 5, so they'll be there a little longer. June 15th. Okay. That's um, all I have. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Um, old business and any new business that we need to discuss? Oh, thank you. Brandon, I just have one question. That was yeah. Council's take on me doing the survey. I don't know if we established That's that or not. That's what I'm going to say. You know, what are we going to do? Because if we don't vote yes, they're going to take it to Manaka, they're going to take it to New Brighton, and they're going to scoop that up for their kids. We are going to be missing out. There's some fine lines that need to be taken care of, like a, a lease. But if we would let them do it for two thousand. The summer of 2019, that would be terrific to, to let them have a trial run of it. And then if there's major problems, and then we don't have to do it 2020. If 
they could start out with something small. They have very large plans, but if they could start out with something small, I think it would be excellent for the community. Mm -hmm. I think that every, every, in every ward there should be a community garden. We have so many empty lots. Maybe if we give this one a trial run with their help. The kids need something to do in this borough. I don't have a problem with the concept. My only concern is it is right in the middle of a neighborhood and what their idea of fencing is. And, and I'm sure they're intending to use all the grass space available. If they bring that fence to, by zoning, they're not allowed to bring the fence all the way out the sidewalk on, along either street. Mm -hmm. I think it's a 20 foot setback. So they lose a lot of that property if they have to keep those fences back. That's something are we going to enforce on them that they're not putting a fence out or they're not supposed to put the fence? How high is the fence going to be? What kind of fence is it going to be? I'm sure they're envisioning chain link fence. Well, is that really appropriate in a neighborhood to have this big empty lot with a big chain link fence around it? I think uh, the concept, I, I like the idea, but it's just how it really plays out in that neighborhood, though and what it ends up making the property look like. Um, that would only be my concern. Well, what if you, for the sake of conversation, and at the same time being adhering to our ordinances, what if you just entered into some type of lease agreement for 2019? However, they would have to adhere to all of the zoning ordinances and they would have to discuss with Peggy and John precisely what they want to do and you can either approve or disapprove. Does that make sense? I'm just tossing this out for discussion. But, but you can't have them construct fences if that's the proper word if in fact it's going to violate our ordinances because other people will look at that and you're, you're creating really what I would label as an illegal precedent. Yeah, the only one that they can have is a, what was in that ordinance? I can't think of the fencing. Split fence. Yeah, split rail fence. Can I address that? Yes. Down there on the main street between Uncle Chuck's and JJ's, that's not considered as a split fence there, and there was a fence put up. Where is that, Uncle Chuck's? Right on Brighton Avenue between uh, Uncle Chuck's <coughs> and JJ's Bar. There was a fence that was put up put up there, and that's not a slate fence. Yeah, that was before my time. It's been there for quite a while. Is that this? Is that the setback? Twenty feet? I think for a fence. Yeah, and and. Love table. And they would have nothing to work with. If it's in a in a lot that is not a corner lot, it's different. The fence across from the parking that parking lot across from there. So corner lot, the fencing's different. Yes. Well, anything that is considered be considered like a front lot. And typically, a house has one access to the street, so it's your front lot. Yes. Your frontage is the twenty feet. Okay. But since she's on the corner. Anything abutting the street is considered front, so now it's all the way around. It has to be shrunk. But you know, if they're agreeable to those stipulations, you know, we just need to make sure that they know what they are. And is there any other lots throughout Rochester? Or not that we own there's a lot of lots. Okay. <laughs> no, no, we own like that one. Okay. I mean, they, they can go out and. They were willing to buy this one if they wanted yeah. to go out and buy one of those vacant lots that are out there. They could always do that. Again, they'd have to abide by the zoning regulations. Just yeah. Okay. I'm in favor of the chief doing the survey, see what the neighbors think. Yeah. And I mean, just because they, they agree with it doesn't mean we have to either, but. Yeah, just to see what I know if it was coming next to my house I would appreciate no. to voice my feelings on it 
but that location down there where they're talking about there's nobody's voices that you would would go to, to to say that it's okay or not okay it's different than being near your home or my home that's that's right there on the corner of what's around it but highways and parking lot now i'm talking about the one on <clears throat> on, the, on Reno. Reno and oh, okay yeah i can understand that yeah no. I thought you was talking about the one no. down on the corner no. down there. I agree with one, you on that. The one right there, and the, there's houses all around it. I agree with you on that. So you can proceed with the survey and see? Does everyone agree? If you guys are okay with it, I will do that. You got to tell them there's going to be a fence around it and everything like that. It's really well, I don't know too much other than what I've just heard here. So, I mean, I was basically just saying. I mean, you're just going to tell them there's going to be a garden. Everybody's going to say, okay, a garden's nice. I think, think you should wait till you get some literature from them, then, you know, before you go approaching people, telling them this and that, not having the full story about what's going on there. You can only go with parts and bits of it. They're not going to know exactly what you're talking about, but if you have a full draft of what you're planning on doing and explaining it step by step, Maybe people will see the picture a lot different than, than the way they were talking about putting six foot tents down here where the theater used to be and it, uh, gates with locks on it and everything like that. Right. Now they're talking about pavilions, but the only people that's going to be able to go in there is the people that has the uh, flyer beds and stuff like that. So it's, what happens if there's like six families who wants to get in there, in there, and what happens if another family wants to get in there, no, they can't get in. That's the reason why I said you need to get a, a draft yeah. of exactly how it's going to be going before you give a decision, yes or no, on something. You're going to have to let them know about the fence, too. I'll talk, I'll talk to them. Yeah, if somebody wants to get all the information, like the mayor said, and give me that literature where I can mm -hmm. say, when I go house to house, this is what they want, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. I don't have no problem doing it. So. Does anyone have anything else they want to discuss? Yeah. Yeah. Does uh, the Madam Commissioner have any felicitations to extend? I do not. First time not since I've known you. <laughs> <laughs> We're grateful that you come. I'm trying to make a call for the municipalities and townships. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hear what's going on in the community. Yeah. Right. Uh, motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Mrs. White and Mr. Brothers. <laughs>